Welcome to Noakes Group. This induction is mandatory for all staff, contractors, customers and visitors to all Noakes sites. This video accompanies the Noakes induction booklet. Please watch this video, then review the induction booklet before completing the induction quiz. Then hand in your completed quiz to the office before starting work. Noakes operates two boatyards on the east coast of Australia, at North Sydney and Nelson Bay, where we perform repairs and maintenance on all types of vessels, from state-of-the-art racing yachts to commercial craft, naval vessels and ferries. Noakes Group also has a boatyard in Tasmania on the Huon River at Kamandi. The Rosman Cruises fleet of ferries operates from North Sydney. Our operational hours are 7am to 6pm Monday to Friday and 7am to 4pm on Saturdays. Our yards are closed on Sundays and on public holidays. The relevant workplace locations are outlined in the induction booklet. On-site parking is reserved for customers which includes contractors, DIY and Commonwealth staff. If you will be working at our main site in North Sydney and intend to use public transport, the nearest train stations are either North Sydney or Waverton. Our other sites have staff parking adjacent to the boatyard. All contractors, customers and visitors are required to sign in at the administration office prior to entering any of our yards. All employees and contractors must have obtained their government issued white card before commencing work on any of our sites. On the successful completion of this safety induction, you will be issued with a Noakes induction card, which must be retained and carried with you on site at all times. Noakes staff will be provided with mandatory high visibility work shirts. They are to be worn at all times in the yard. You will need to provide your own pants, sun hat, enclosed shoes and wet weather gear. Additional personal protective equipment, PPE, will be supplied as required. Contractors, customers and visitors must wear high visibility work shirts or vests and closed footwear. Shoes may be removed only while on the deck of a vessel or in the cabin. Depending on your role, and particularly if you're a tradesperson, you'll be required to supply your own hand tools. All power tools and cables brought onto our sites must have valid test and tag labels. Each site has toilet and shower facilities. At the North Sydney site, public toilets and showers are situated at the rear of the office building. If you wish to shower, please provide your own towel and toiletries. Each member of staff will be provided with a locker where you can store your personal items. Please don't bring valuables to the workplace. Each site has a lunchroom containing a fridge, kettle, coffee and tea. Please bring your own cup. The induction booklet details Noakes' policies. Please take time to read these. Here are some of the key points. Health and safety. All employees, contractors and customers are expected to follow safe work practices, observe company safety rules and report hazards, incidents or near misses by completing a hazard or injury report. Completed reports must be submitted to management. We consult with our employees through regular toolbox talks and provide appropriate training and supervision to ensure work is conducted in a safe manner. The environment. Given our close proximity to surrounding waterways, we're committed to minimising our impact on the environment, including noise. We have work practices in place to ensure there is no runoff to the ocean. Please be aware that, one, sanding, scraping and application of paint directly over the water is not permitted at any time. Two, no materials or water must spill over the edge of the hard stand. Three, when working on the slipway, underwater hull work must always be carried out above the tide line. And if the tide line is above the catchment drain, suitable bunding must be put in place. Four, the catchment drain must be pumped out before the tide line crosses the drain. Five, spill kits are located around the yard and are to be used in the event of a spill. 
quality control. Noakes has a reputation for providing quality work in rigging, painting, shipwright and yard services. We consistently strive to exceed our customers' expectations. All work must be conducted ensuring the appropriate job safety and environment analysis, JSEA, is understood and signed off prior to work commencement. All work is to be inspected by the appropriate manager before the boat is handed back to the customer. If you're ever unsure of the correct way to do something, please check with your supervisor. Noakes has a zero tolerance policy for sexual harassment, discrimination and bullying. Procedures are in place to deal with any incident and will be investigated promptly and confidentially. We ensure all recruitment procedures are based on skill and equity regardless of race or gender. We have a great team and we strive to ensure there is a friendly environment in the workplace, making Noakes an enjoyable place to work. Injury management. We are committed to preventing injury in the workplace. However, in the event that a worker, customer or contractor is injured on site, management must be notified immediately, even if treatment is not required. An incident report form available from the office must be completed. If a worker requires medical treatment, we work with the company's medical consultant to develop a return to work program. This ensures that any injured employee can return to work as soon as possible, either in their usual role or at suitable alternate duties until they're fit to return to their normal role. Drugs and alcohol are prohibited on site. Due to the potential safety risks, employees have a responsibility to ensure they are not impaired by drugs or alcohol at work. A breach of this policy will lead to disciplinary action, which may include dismissal. Management is required to confidentially take appropriate action, including testing if a staff member is suspected to be under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Smoking is permitted during breaks, only under the awning beside Shed 1 or in the crow's nest upstairs from the administration building. The use of headphones may impair your capacity to perform your job safely and are not permitted during work. Mobile phones are not to be carried by Noakes staff unless required to perform Noakes related tasks. Mobile phones should only be used appropriately for work related matters and never when operating machinery or near dangerous or flammable goods. Personal protective equipment needs to be worn to minimise the risk of injury. Mandatory items to be worn at all times include enclosed shoes, a Noakes high visibility shirt and SPF 30 plus sunscreen available from the storeroom or shed too. In addition, PPE charts display the appropriate equipment that must be worn when undertaking specific tasks listed on job cards. Noakes provides the following PPE to staff. Eye protection. Safety goggles or glasses to be worn when sanding, grinding, chipping, drilling or handling dangerous chemicals. Hand protection. Gloves to be worn when handling dangerous chemicals, operating, rotating or reciprocating machinery and when cleaning or material handling. Hearing protection. Earplugs or earmuffs to be worn when passing through or working in areas of high risk such as near grinders or trimmers. Respiratory protection. Respirators are required by the nature of the work. Hard hat for crane work or as listed in the JSEA or SWMS. Contractors are required to bring and wear their own PPE. Walk only within proper walkways and avoid shortcuts through dangerous areas. Be aware of travel lift, forklift and mobile crane movements at all times. You're strongly encouraged to wash your hands before eating. All staff and contractors are responsible for maintaining a clean and safe working environment. Scrap material must be disposed of in the correct containers such as solvent-soaked rags to be placed in designated metal bins inside the anti-foul and resin sheds. 
The area around machinery is to be kept clear of obstruction at all times and materials and equipment shall not be placed in walkways, access areas or in areas blocking fire or emergency equipment. Working at height on ladders and stairways and scaffolding. When working above ground level, do not drop or throw anything to a lower level. Use handrails, safety barriers or stanchions when possible. Always ensure you have one hand free to protect yourself. On board vessels, never walk outside the guardrails. With A-frame scaffolding, when working above shoulder height or above the yellow indicator lines, you must use double planking and plank clamps. If working at a height above two metres, you're required to wear a safety harness attached to a strong point or safety line. When using a ladder, ensure it is without defect. An unsafe ladder should be tagged and reported immediately. Ladders should be secured at the top and placed on solid foundations. The angle of inclination should not exceed 4 to 1 or 75%. Scaffolding must be erected by a suitably qualified person. Where scaffolding is over 1.5 metres high, special precautions may be implemented. Vehicles and mobile plant are frequently in use. All operators need a valid licence or certificate of competency and shall be familiar with the operation of the vehicle or plant. The driver is responsible for the safe operation and for ensuring that all pre-start routines are conducted and safety and warning devices are present and operational before use. Importantly, all staff in the vicinity of an operational crane are required to wear hard hats, do not walk under a crane load and ensure that suspended loads are never moved over the heads of personnel or left unattended. Hazardous materials and chemicals are to be used in accordance with the safety data sheets, SDSs, which are stored outside and inside the designated HAS-CHEM lockers. These outline the proper work practices for each substance. If you're unsure, consult your supervisor. Chemical spills to the skin or eyes should be treated and reported immediately. There is an eye wash bay inside Shed 3. Chemical spills to the ground should be cleaned up immediately using the dedicated spill kits located around the yard. Contractors bringing hazardous materials on site must inform the NOAKS WHS manager and have appropriate SDSs. Only licensed tradespeople are permitted to repair electrical equipment or wiring. All electrical lines are to be treated as live unless there is a positive indication that the power is off. Portable electrical equipment such as extension leads and power boards should have current inspection tags attached. If not, they cannot be used until inspected and certified and tagged as safe to operate. Do not allow water or rain to lie on electrical equipment. Cover it or lift it up. Make sure that any extension cords running through the workplace are safely suspended off the floor by hooks or wires. In the case of an electrical emergency, never touch someone who is captivated by an energised electrical circuit. Turn off the power source or use non-conductive material such as dry wood to separate the person from the source. Isolation tags are attached to equipment that is not suitable for use. An out-of-service tag isolates equipment likely to endanger the safety of users and equipment. Danger tags are attached to equipment which must never be operated. When using compressed air, always make sure that cylinders are chained upright, their valves are shut when not being used. They are stored on flat surfaces away from heat sources and at least six metres away from flammable substances. Cylinders are only lifted in cradles or approved slings. All fuel gas cylinders must be fitted with a flashback arrestor at the torch end. Oxy-fuel gas cylinders cannot be taken inside vessels at any time. Only the cutting handpiece and hoses are permitted inside a confined space. Never attempt to grab an air hose that is snaking due to uncontrollable air escape. Always turn the air off at the source. 
Never direct compressed air at yourself or another person. Don't use compressed air to blow away dust. Hot work is defined as any work that produces a spark of flame, including welding and mechanical grinding. Before starting hot work, you must obtain a hot work permit from the Noakes WHS manager. A sentry is required for any hot work occurring on vessels. Where possible, welding screens should be put in place to protect nearby personnel from flash. Suitable PPE must be worn at all times by welders and their assistants. Avoid standing on wet ground when using an electrical arc welder. Use a piece of timber or rubber as insulation against earthing. All gauges, hoses, connectors and torches shall be checked for defects before use. Isolate the area before welding by removing any flammable liquids, gases and combustible material such as rags or paper. Ensure appropriate firefighting equipment is immediately available. Never let sparks fall on oxy-fuel cylinders or hoses. Remember to check for any combustion at the end of shift. When working outdoors, reduce the risk of skin cancer by applying sunscreen available from the storeroom or shed too. Wear a hat and, where possible, construct a temporary shelter to provide shade. Whenever you're using power tools and machinery, always use the correct tool for the job. Only use tools that you've been trained to use and know the safety requirements. Safety guards on equipment must be used at all times. The operator must ensure that all belts, pulleys, gears and moving parts within two metres above the floor are guarded prior to operation. Suitable eye protection must be worn at all times when operating revolving or reciprocating machinery. Do not wear loose-fitting clothing or jewellery. All power tools must have a valid test and tag label. Confined spaces are defined as enclosed or partially enclosed spaces which have restricted means of entry and exit. They may have an atmosphere which contains potentially harmful levels of contaminant or could cause claustrophobic reactions. This may include ballast or fuel tanks and small spaces inside vessels. Only those personnel who have attended confined space training and have been certified as competent in confined space entry may enter and conduct work inside a confined space. A confined space work permit must be obtained prior to starting work from the Noakes WHS manager. All confined spaces must be vented, gas-freed and certified as fit to enter. An approved rescue plan must be developed before work begins. Incorrect handling of materials causes the greatest number of workplace accidents. When manually handling materials, ensure that the load you lift is within your lifting capacity. Always use correct lifting practices. Keep a straight back, lift with your legs, avoid twisting and keep the load close to your body. Wear gloves if necessary. Use mechanical aids or get help to lift heavy loads. As far as possible, noise should be kept to a minimum. Power tools, hand tools and machinery are permitted to be used between 7am to 6pm Monday to Friday and 7am to 4pm on Saturdays. Outside those operating hours, including Sundays and public holidays, noise is prohibited. That includes machinery noise, loud radios and excessive hammering. Damage to hearing caused by constant noise exposure is irreparable. If you have to raise your voice to be heard by someone standing 60 centimetres away, you should be wearing hearing protection. If you're working within 15 metres of chipping, grinding, hammering, abrasive blasting, you must wear hearing protection. Earplugs are available from the storeroom. Flammable materials are sometimes used in the course of daily work at Noakes. Flammable materials and liquids should only be stored in approved containers. Only the amount necessary for one day's work should be kept on board vessels or in immediate work areas. Fire hoses are located around the hard stand. There are fire extinguishers in each shed. Take the time to identify this equipment. 
In the event of fire, employees must never put themselves in danger. Everyone should make sure there is sufficient access to all areas should evacuation or firefighting be necessary. Whenever a fire extinguisher has been used or is found with a broken seal, it should be removed from potential use and reported to the main office. All emergencies, such as fire, dangerous spills or injuries, must be reported to a supervisor or the main office immediately. The supervisor will determine whether the situation can be made safe or if evacuation is required. When reporting an emergency, calmly state the type of emergency, your location and name, the area or person affected, whether emergency services are required and whether evacuation is advisable. Noakes Fire Warden will use a loud hailer to sound the alarm in case of fire. The main muster point is located in the staff car park at the northern end of the site. In the event of a fire in the office building, the muster point is located at the southern end of the site, outside Shed 4 at the Munro Street exit. A sample job card is shown on page 28 of the induction booklet. Job cards show details of each vessel, including name, type, size and the arrival date and time. Each line on the job card is colour-coded, depending on which department is responsible for the task. Green for yard, pink for shipwright, yellow for rigging and blue for paint. Tasks are listed in the order which they must be completed. They're also numbered to show the corresponding personal protective equipment that is to be worn. Please have a look at the PPE chart outlined on page 29 of the induction booklet. Thank you for watching. Now please review the induction booklet and complete the induction quiz.